Hello, today we'll discuss instrumental deliveries, which is the delivery of a baby using an instrument for assistance. The incidence of instrumental deliveries varies uh, between and within countries. In some places, the, they are as low as 1.5%, and in other places, it is as high as 26%. So these are some of the indications for instrumental deliveries. Um, we have maternal and fetal indications. The most common fetal indication is fetal distress or a compromised baby. On the maternal indications, we have exhaustion, prolonged second stage due to various reasons, cardiac diseases, and hypertensive uh, disorders <clears throat> of pregnancy such as preeclampsia and eclampsia. So the ventus, also known as a vacuum, is an instrument that is designed to assist the delivery by creating a vacuum between it and the fetal scalp. There are different types of vacuum cups. Some of them are metal cups, like the ones that we see here. Others are semi-rigid cups, like the ones that, that we have here. The, uh, in 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 our hospitals the majority of the of the cups that you see will be uh, the soft or semi-rigid cups some time back we used to see the metal cups but uh, over the past few years we've not seen we've not been seeing much of the of the metal cups so what are some of the requirements for us to do uh, a vacuum uh, a vacuum delivery so the presentation should preferably be cephalic. The membranes must be ruptured. There should be no evidence of CPD. The cervix must be fully dilated. This one probably should, should be the first one. The head must be well engaged in that the descent should be less than three fifths. And of course, the one who's doing it uh, should, be, should be well trained. So the technique of application is that the center of the cup should be over the sagittal suture about two centimeters in front of the posterior frontanel. That is two centimeters anterior to the posterior to the posterior frontanel. So here we have an illustration of the correct placement of the cup. So this one here, this one here is the posterior frontanel, and the cup is is placed two centimeters anterior to the posterior frontanel. These, of course, are uh, what would happen if you have incorrect placement. That's how they look like. And often, if you don't place it correctly, you have difficulties delivering the baby. So we go ahead with the technique. As you place your vacuum, make sure that you don't uh, put in maternal tissue in the cup. Imagine what would happen if you uh, put vaginal tissue in the cup and you start pulling. The tears could be uh, could be devastating. The pressure that you need to press the, the, that you need to put is a maximum negative pressure of about 0 0.8 kg per centimeter squared. So the traction should be intermittent and coordinated with the maternal expulsive efforts. We, what this means is that every time that uh, a woman has a contraction, that's when you encourage her to push, and that is when you you, you pull on the vacuum. Uh, when the contraction goes away, you also stop pulling, just like that. So the traction may be initiated with a two-handed technique, which is where you put one... Uh, one fingers of one hand are placed over the suction cup while the other hand grabs the instrument. So when there's a contraction, the traction should be should be sustained and it should be in the direction of the axis of the birth canal. It shouldn't exceed 30 minutes and you shouldn't exceed more than three applications. 
and you should change from one instrument to the other as you know the other instrument that we use is a forceps so when your vacuum when your vacuum fails it is recommended that you go ahead and do a cesarean section uh, and not apply a forceps or vice versa if you are doing forceps and it fails you go ahead and do a, a cesarean section not to try with a vacuum so you only use one instrument at a time so here we have someone uh, pushing away maternal tissue and they've applied the vacuum on the <clears throat> two centimeters anterior to the posterior frontal nail and as you can see the traction is in the direction of the of the of the maternal of the maternal pelvis of the birth canal uh, what this means is that you should be familiar with normal delivery with the uh, the normal mechanism of labor for you to be able to do a correct vacuum after after the head is delivered immediately the chin comes out it is advised that you you remove the cap so what how do we make a decision and say this one is a failed vacuum when do we abandon the procedure so when you're pulling and there's no descent and then you know that's an indication to abandon the procedure or if you've had the uh, three pulls what that means is that there is no descent after 20 minutes of uh, pulling 20 to 30 minutes of pulling then well you advise to abandon the procedure then if the cup slips off the head with maximum negative pressure you've applied enough pressure and the cup slips off then probably you need to abandon the procedure the vacuum has got complications for both the mother and the baby and it is not in that order there may be complications for both of them at the same time for the mother you, you may have various forms of tears on the cervix tears of the vagina uh, extension of the episiotomy she may get pph because of the trauma infections an incompetent os and genital prolapse later in life um the mother may the baby may develop hypoxia there may be injury to the scalp abrasions lacerations cephalohematoma intracranial injuries subgaleo hemorrhage intraventricular hemorrhage and so forth so this one shows uh, some of the injuries that may happen to the baby there may be a caput uh, you may have a cephalohematoma you may have sub a subgaleo hematoma or you may have an epidural hematoma the, may, the baby may also sustain neonatal jaundice shoulder dystocia and uh, uh, neurological neurological problems later so studies have shown that uh, there are many cases where uh, you may get injuries to the baby that is um, a study was done in australia where they uh, looked at 100 babies and about a third of all of the 100 babies had a vacuum and when they did an mri they found that a third of them about 27 had some form of injury some of it was not apparent uh, but some of them were apparent injuries various form of injuries to the babies so we don't do a vacuum in premature babies uh, in cpd in a breach uh, when the station is high you know above above zero when a station is above zero you want to avoid a vacuum or when you are suspecting a coagulopathies so from the vacuum the other instrument that we use is a is the is a forceps uh, these are the parts of the forceps you've got handles uh, you've got a lock a shank and a blade which is divided into into a pelvic cave and a and a cephalic cave so 
the <clears throat> the prerequisites for for a forceps are more or less the same as those of a vacuum so here we shall stick to the low forceps or outlet forceps the mid cavity forceps and high forceps are no longer done in modern obst obstetrics because yeah the the complications both both to the mother and baby and the difficulty of doing them uh, has made them to be to be out of use so the prerequisites include the position should either be hospital anterior or hospital posterior she should be fully dilated the membrane should be ruptured you should have emptied the bladder there should be no cpd and the station should be at least a uh, plus two for a low forceps mm. forceps also have complications for both the mother and the baby the mother you get the third and fourth degree uh, perineal lacerations pain hematomas postpartum hemorrhage urinary retention and urinary and fecal incontinence then for the baby you can get scalp lacerations kephalohematoma depressed skull asphyxia facial palsy and spine spine injuries so the advantages of having tools over over forceps uh, you, um, a vacuum will occupy less space compared to to a forceps and with a vacuum because it occupies less space you have less maternal trauma and genital tract injuries and you need you don't need as much analgesia in vacuum compared to forceps and the, the recovery for, for for the mother is quicker from a vacuum than forceps and it is easier to use and probably that is why it is more widely or more widely uh, adopted compared to the vacuum at least uh, in our environment the vacuum is more widely adopted so where you need to give moderate traction the forceps will be more effect effective uh, and if you need to deliver a baby quick for example you've got an abrupt or a cold prolapse at full dilatation the forceps will be quicker compared to a vacuum and because the forceps forms a pro protective cage around the baby you can use it in in premature babies and it can be used in the after coming head of the of a breach and you don't get as much uh, injuries to the baby as as the vacuum so instrumental deliveries they have a place uh, we use them a lot in in our labor wards and the, the the practice varies in between countries and within the country and for most for most practitioners the vacuum seems to be the instrument of choice uh, over the over the forceps so thank you for listening that was our presentation on uh, on instrumental deliveries and we'll see you on the next one